Hello and welcome back to the port. I'm the Gap Major and this is a review of the Tier 6 German Premium Cruiser Muchen which has become available for 12,500 doubloons. Now this is a Tier 5 and 6 game of domination on neighbours on the enemy team with a Mahan, a Vaquilin, a Graf Spey in a division with a Gneisenhal, a Mayuku, a Muchen, a Surrey, a Helena and a Colorado. Um, I'm not going to recognise the uh, silly names that they've given these uh, premium Mayukus, in all honesty. So, I spawned on the centre and moving over to the right. Now, Muchen is a M-Class Scout Cruiser design, uh, and they two of the class were laid down. Um, however, they were cancelled, uh, sh literally, as World War II started, and you can't really blame them when you consider the issues with the design. Uh, the issues with the design were that they had a very weak main armament, they had a very weak anti-aircraft complement. Um, the engine space for all their engines uh, were fitted into a single room, so that means the engines on the Muchen or the M-Class could be disabled by a single hit. And furthermore, uh, they actually had insufficient uh, space on board to carry the crew that they would inevitably have to take in order to fulfill their role as a long distance scout cruiser. So um, I think maybe the war starting and cancelling these cruisers was almost a blessing in disguise. So in comparison to the tech tree cruisers at tier 6, let's go through some of the stats. Well survivability wise um, she has the lowest HP at 30,200 points. Um, she has a below average torpedo reduction of 10%. Now regarding the armor, uh, it looks intriguing. Um, Officially with the design, the uh, the armor was actually insufficient as well. However, let's go uh, back to the port and have a look at the armor. And so we're back in the port and uh, taking a look at the armor of the Muchen. Well, let's start off with the bow and the stern. This is pretty much mostly plated in very thin plating, which isn't going to be resisting very much. It's capable of ricocheting 8-inch uh, AP shells, um, so you'd be doing all right against uh, some of the heavy cruisers and uh, lesser, but uh, against battleships, uh, bow armor, stern armor, it's not going to be resisting much. Going on to the superstructure, and it's just a standard 13mm plating all over, a nice harvestable area for um, small caliber AP uh, or short fuse AP or uh, high explosive shells. The turret bite bites don't look too bad, um, you've got 60 millimeter well you got 100 millimeter frontal plating and 60 millimeter everywhere else so that's not too bad really that is capable of um causing pretty much any ap shell to ricochet um however it has got to be angled um <clears throat> otherwise it's uh going to be probably coming through if it's very high caliber stuff um Going on to the auxiliary room armor, or basically what is the mostly the upper armored belt and the deck armor. Now the deck armor is quite interesting. That's 25 millimeters thick, and that is capable of skipping 14 inch shells off. However, the side plates are simply about the upper armor belt is 20 millimeters thick, which um, is only really going to be any good against 8 inch or less. And then the lower armored belt is 50 millimeters. However, it's not a lot of it. Um, it's one of those things I think if, uh, if you're going to be angling, uh, most shells of high calibre are probably going to be coming through the upper arm about, at least that's where I'd probably want to be aiming. Um, she does have a turtle back armour scheme, uh, so she has got that lower arm about 50mm and then she's got an inner arm about on the sister of another additional 50mm I think, no 35mm, mm. that's um, it's enough to cause AP shells uh, of most calibers to ricochet, so that is helpful. Um, so I guess if it's coming in side on, it might ricochet up into the auxiliary room. Obviously it's got to try and punch through the 50mm outer plate and then the 35mm slope. Um, and also maybe it means that if you're trying to angle, uh, you're hoping it's going to be 
skipping off, but it does mean that most AP shells will be probably detonating in your auxiliary room. It's worth noting that the top of your citadel is uh, purely plated in 20 millimeters, which isn't that thick, and that's only really going to stop a plunging fire of um, eight inches or more. However, you have got remember you have got that armored deck on it. However, I mean the perfect shot. Um, it's potential, it's potential that the perfect shot could come in, go straight through your 20mm upper bow and then go through your 20mm uh, top uh, and sell you there. So you don't want to be getting caught broadside on, but then that goes with a lot of cruisers I guess you could say. Uh, turret barbettes, nicely well armoured um, and well located where you would expect them. Uh, going on to the Sistel, it is above water but it is a tailback it does mean you're going to be survival at close ranges i guess you could say um unless someone's able to really get a nice it's more like plunging fire which you're probably more more than fifth 14 inch plunging fire is obviously going to be a concern at long range because it goes straight through your deck armor into the top of your sister um but i think most of the time you're going to be taking damage to your auxiliary room. Uh, I think that's where you're going to be harvested is the best way to put it. Oh well, that's the armor of the Mutian, so let's go back to the game. Oh, welcome back. Let's move on to the artillery. Regarding the artillery, she has eight six-inch guns in four dual gun turrets. We have A turret, B turret super firing up front, and then we also have Y turret, X turret super firing at the rear. So uh, it does give you a reasonable amount of armament fore and aft. I'm just picking on this Surrey. I'm gonna pop a sonar on because I anticipate that the uh, the Surrey would have dumped torpedoes. There we go. And I might just quickly do a swish here. Now, continuing with the guns, uh, she has a just below average range of 14.8 kilometers. She also has the fastest reload in comparison to the Tech Tree cruisers, uh, which is 5 seconds. Now, she also has the joint second fastest turret traverse speed, which is 20 seconds for every 180 degrees of rotation. Uh, sorry. Just going for the superstructure, I think. There we go. Just didn't want to be getting into a torpedo arcs, that's all. Right, uh, going on to the shells and the, your DPMs, uh, you are looking at having the lowest high explosive shell damage. You're also looking at having the lowest fire chance, along with having the third lowest AP shell damage. That's probably to be expected, uh, considering that you are looking at having such a quick rate of fire. should be able to launch an aircraft soon and keep that back room spotted. Now, obviously we have just mentioned her fast rate of fire and when you add her shell damages to her rate of fire you are looking at having the third best high explosive DPM, the best AP DPM and the third best fires per minute for your tier. Let's launch that aircraft now. Going on to the torpedoes, uh, she has two quadruple launchers, one per side. Quite nice angles, I, have a, I must say. Um, now, these have an above average launcher reload time of 90 seconds, uh, but a below average reload time per tube. Now, these do have the joint third lowest torpedo damage, an average detection of 1.3 kilometers, and the second shortest range of 6 kilometers. However, they do have an above average speed of 64 knots. And this is going to be very risky to engage this. Uh, Vacrolin, I must confess. Especially with the amount of ships that they do have. 
Maybe we might just borrow this smoke screen and start uh, picking on some ships. Traverse uh, coming in useful. Mm, fortunately, it's not advantageous for us to hang around. My hand's reversing up in that smoke screen. We'll have to just see. Thankfully, uh, she is quite fast in reverse. Yep, we should be able to just motor out here. Torpedoes auf Steuerbord. We might as well start talking about the manoeuvrability, being that we're uh, showcasing some of that. Um, she is the fastest at 36 knots, which is, um, well, I guess it's the purpose of her being a scout cruiser. She's supposed to be fast to uh, get away uh, from whatever she might find. Now, when it comes to her turning circle, she does have a just above average turning circle of 690 meters. She also has the third best rudder shift at 8 Point three seconds. Going on to concealment, she does have above average concealment um, or above average detectability by C, which is 12.5 kilometers. She also has the second worst from air, which is uh, 7.5. So she's very detectable from the air, which is quite interesting. Regarding consumables, she does come with uh, two sonar. Uh, now these will detect ships at 5.4 kilometers, torpedoes at 3.8 kilometers, has 116 second duration and 180 second reload. And as per most cruisers, uh, she has the standard uh, catapult fighter for the tier. Now I'm not going to go into too much details regarding catapult fighters because I'd say they're all open to change considering they want to introduce their aircraft carriers to the game. It's one of the reasons why I've noticed that they've removed the damage per second stats of the uh, catapult fighters. Ooh. And that's the uh, plunging 15 inch shells that I was always concerned about. I was kind of hoping that maybe my speed would be my ace up my sleeve, but unfortunately, good eyes and how dispersion means it's not easy to work out where shells are going to land sometimes. So I think we're just going to break off that engagement. Unfortunately, we don't have any repair parties with this uh, cruiser to actually kind of um, improve our survivability. She's very much about maneuverability. Um, Gun-wise, historically, probably would have been pretty poor. Um, however, in the game, she's not too bad, I guess you could say. Torpedoes are torpedoes pretty much on par with, say, the, uh, the York. Survivability, a slightly better Nuremberg, I guess would be one to put it. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to be pushing in. I think this is now very much a matter of uh, just holding off, letting the points tick down and not really handing ourselves in. Sometimes not engaging the enemy is the best way to win, especially in a situation like this. I think our sorry is taking a bit of a big risk there though. I mean I've already taken my big risk and I've been punished for it.
Now you may notice I really am motoring around it in the high 40s. Um, it's because it's a speed build. Of course it's a speed build. You can't go by the name Gallagher Major if you don't race around. <laughs> Let's see if we can just get ourselves into a nice position behind an island where we can then rely on the rest of our team to do some spotting. Now, uh, regarding the modules taken, um, I've taken aiming systems um, as your initial mod. Uh, for the second mod, obviously, I've gone for uh, propulsion systems. The reason being is. Uh, in a speed build, uh, taking propulsion systems is always quite a good choice because what that does mean is that obviously you can stop and start quicker, but also if you uh, maneuver heavily, uh, then you can actually gain speed quicker coming out of the turn. Um, so, means if you are going for a speed build, obviously you want to be maintaining as much speed as possible. Um, so, you're looking for situations where you can do that. Um, I might just see if I can just motor off in this direction and get the shells to go over the island. For the uh, third module, I've taken the steering gears, the uh, the one that has the largest impact on your rudder shift time. I mean, she does have quite a good rudder shift base anyway, but um, being able to make that a little bit better is always worthwhile. I think we can just about start getting shells over. Obviously, you don't want to start getting too close to the island. Picking on the grass bay, that's probably one of the most dangerous cruisers they've got on their team. The Mai, the Maiku is a good one. She is a tier higher, but I think uh, 11 inch guns is going to be a little bit of a concern. We've lost our Surrey. I'm going to have to start motoring out of here. I'm an easy kill for their team, uh, so they're probably going to want to target me if they can. There goes the Maiku on the enemy team. Rear turrets should still sneak through. Nope. Well, time to uh, just disappear and disengage. We've got 58 seconds left. So that's one thing I always recommend is um, when the when the situation calls for it, don't uh, be afraid about just simply disengaging uh, from the combat and engaging the enemies in other ways. Here I'm in a bit of a pickle because of the Eisenhower. I think that might be me. Ooh. Sneaking away out of that one. Right, we've disengaged from the Gnaiz now. And there we go. So even though I had 113 HP left, I didn't hand those points over to the enemy team. Oh, moving the campaign along, but we're not too interested in that, so let's just uh, skip that. Um, coming, let's see, 64,000 damage, 157 hits on target, 3 defender ribbons, 6 fires. Um, so not really a high damage game. Did get a uh, joint capture, probably uh, coming second on the team. Can't complain about that. I probably would have expected lower on the team, but then again, sometimes just surviving to the end is very helpful, especially uh, 
in your contribution to the team as well. By not dying, you're not handing those points over to the enemy team. Economy-wise, obviously a tier 6 premium, so reduced ship service cost. And uh, with premium and a common credit booster, managed to make 301,000 credits, which is all very nice. All in all, um, she's an interesting cruiser. Um, probably uh, bent the historical accuracy a little bit. I guess you could say, to try and make her better than she probably would have been. There's a reason why the Germans cancelled them, let's be honest. But yeah. I guess better than a Nuremberg. <laughs> Can't complain about that. Well, if you have enjoyed it, uh, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy this kind of content, feel free to subscribe. If you already have subscribed, let's say thank you very much. As always, down in the description is the command build and the ship modules used, along with the email address to the channel if you want to send in any of your own game captures for the Community Spotlight video, and also the link to Patreon. If you're Patreon, your lovely names will be appearing on screen now, I hope. And until next time, I'm the guy from Major, and back to the port. Hey, hey, clear the way, here comes the galloping Major. Get out of the way there, you fellows. Unless you want me to run you down, I guess this is the life. Now, hey, hey, clear the way. Here comes the galloping maze.